Hey everyone, welcome to Flying Idaho. Thanks for bearing with me. It's been a long time since I got to fly and since I got to record a video for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. In this one I'll be uh, getting to know the Cessna 172S, which is a 2003 uh, model. It's a Millennium Edition. As you'll see, it's a very nice airplane. Uh, very well equipped, too. So I'm just going to stop talking and let you watch the pre-flight process as Darren explains to me all the features of this airplane. And uh, that's my wife there in the background. She joined me for this flight as well. We did this in conjunction with my uh, flight review. My flying skills were not up to par for that. But um, I'll be going back in a week to uh, try again. And uh, that just means I'll have more video. So enjoy. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. So right here you notice that I'm climbing up to the top of the wing, checking the amount of fuel in the tank. We use a clear straw for this that's made for this job and it's calibrated so all you have to do is hold your thumb over it and read the answer. It's 16 on that wing and about 14 to 13 on here. 39, so we're good. About four hours, two, three, three quarter hours of fuel. Yep. <laughs> I would agree. All right. Um, so obviously the flaps are the same as the 152, 10, 20, 30, you know. Yeah. On. You have a dummy uh, set of lights up here, what I call dummy lights, and you can, it has you in the check list, check all those lights to make sure all the bulbs are working, but it gives you, it, you know, whatever issues arise, low fuel, low vacuum, low oil pressure, etc. Uh-huh. Does this book go in here? No, it goes back here. Back. Let's see back here. walk around <clears throat> read type stall warning horn and you can't test it unless the master switch is on so it's different oh yeah can't just suck, suck on, on it, it. oh yeah, you still but do but master has to. But I, ha I couldn't reach it anyway <laughs> A little bit. Especially these guys right here. Control wires. See the wire right here? That's yeah. directly connected to the yoke. Huh. That's all that moves the surface. Huh. It's a big, big, it's a big, big RC airplane. <laughs> yeah. What about this? Plastic. So not structural. So you'll have cracks. They tried to stop drill, but obviously missed. <laughs> so it'll have to happen again. Needs another stop drill. Yep. Yeah. yeah, very common to have the plastic crack. Looks like this guy needs a few more stop drills. That one hasn't even been drilled yet. Just wow. pull the drill out. And drill some holes in here. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Pretty new tires on it. How come these hinges don't have the display on the other side where they're normally folded out? No, just the style. Just cut there, off yeah. and they're wrapped around in one nut there. Yeah, just the style. 
I like how they're all copper bound though. Right here, please. Check the oil, we're at six. Back to February temperature. <laughs> okay. Nothing real different as far as the free flight goes. No. It's, uh, <laughs> that that's a pretty big difference. You ready, Sam? Okay. Checklist. Got a holder right there. Oh, Is nice. Right? on my knee board in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the other thing on the fuel is it has a shut off. There's no off here. Okay, and it's so just it's left, right, left and both. Right, and then you're to shut fuel off there. Okay. Okay. One minor difference. It does have an alternate static port. You see the needles jump when you go to alternate static. Yep. Okay. Lights, throttle mixture. Your got your switches. flow and EGT over here. Up here you got, uh, this is your uh, electric trim. trim. And you got to pull oh, them both ele together. Electric and trim. So huh? trim it. Mm -hmm. oh, can't man. pull just one of them. You got to pull them both. So you can't accidentally hit the corner and trim it, you know. So right. You pull both uh, together. Push to talk. Manual yeah, trim. Push talk up here. This is auto oh, disconnect. That's the disconnect. That's yeah. the trigger. Okay. Yep. Okay. Transponder, COM, COM, yep. Autopilot, 94, Moving Map, mm -hmm. Audio Panel, pretty well equipped, nice Heart airplane. Break. Could I pull it out to set it, to turn it to release. Okay. You've got a passenger briefing card. Oh, nice. <laughs> Didn't pull up hard enough. Uh -huh. You know how to operate your seatbelt? Oh, <laughs> there it is. Required by federal law to make sure you understand the operation of seatbelt and emergency egress. Yeah, it's just like a car. Just pull it. You'll have to let it slide back so I can get in, but then I'll be sliding back forward again. Yep. Okay. You gonna be okay without your booster? I think so. This chair looks like it's gonna go. It goes it's higher too. Right there. Oh, it even has a light back here. Is that it? Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's got a little light. Yep. <laughs> Reading light. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of cool. Hold those for me, please. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, that's okay. probably it's probably all right. I think I got try four. Just, try just the rudder pedal with no brake all the way in. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah. The is high in there. Then once you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the door you'll have a latch once you pull the shut forward. Good. Okay. That's it. Alright. Get out and raise the latch to open. Alright, let's try this bad boy out. Weather and density, weight and balance done. Flight plan, nope. All the papers are here. Certificate, mm -hmm. POH. Fuel is on both. Fuel shut off, valve is off. Control lock's been removed. Let's verify that. We have no binding. Okay. 
we checked all of those. Quantity, quality, arrangement, property, stall indicator, surfaces, pedo, static, gear, tires, antennas, ties, truck, truck, bar, baggage door, when to walk around. Are we recording the hops down here? Yeah. Okay. It's in the book in the back seat. You know that white binder right there, Sam? Yeah. And the pencil that's in my bag. I think there might be a pen in that book too. This white book? Yeah. No, the, 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 the one that's oh, in the seat. I see it. Right next to the bag. There's a pen in there and then the fuel card down at Silver Hawk. But the keep it this time down, right? static we already checked that so, and brakes are working see tracks racked and locked of course our avionics master oh two buses too. Mm -hmm. avionics are off autopilot is off mixture is fully brakes are set the prop is clear So, where's the fuel pump switch? So, we go so until it reads. Yeah. And we gotta go rich. Go yeah. rich to prime it. Watch the needle come up. It'll rise, give it time. Watch the throttle. Now pump the lean, shut the pump off, okay. and get ready to put it back rich again, engage the starter, when it fires, go rich. Little, little adjust, go back to lean, go again. So I'll start talking some more now that the engine's running, you're not going to be able to hear a whole lot of the conversation. Here we are taxiing out to the runway for departure. Just like to point out, as you noticed, uh, we follow checklists all the time. Regardless of how well we think we know it, we want to make sure we don't miss anything. 
As we get down towards the end of the runway, we'll uh, pull over to the side of the taxiway and do our run up and before takeoff checklists. That really is to just make sure that the engine's going to perform as we expect and that it's properly set up for takeoff. The rest of it is uh, making sure the airplane is configured, the controls are free and correct, the trim is set for takeoff, and all the avionics that are needed are set as well, which includes your directional gyro, um, artificial horizon, altimeter, and a couple other things. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, artificial horizon was all over the place when we first started. It actually didn't settle down until we took off, so we suspect there might be something going on with it. It may need replaced or repaired, but it is not a required instrument for daytime VFR flying, so we're okay to fly without it, uh, even if it wasn't working correctly. It did work correctly, it just took it a while to, uh, to get there. It's operated by a vacuum pump that uh, causes uh, a little propeller or impeller, I should say, to turn and spin the gyro. And uh, just took it a while for it to uh, start spinning and orient itself. But you'll notice later in the video that it's working just fine. So uh, here's the point where we start the run up checks and uh, get ready for takeoff. As you see here in the run up, we brought the engine up to 1800 RPM. Uh, we're adjusting the fuel air mixture so that it's properly leaned for the altitude. So you'll notice it'll drop here just a hair and then I'll richen it back up. We're also checking the temperature and pressure to make sure that they're within normal limits. And uh, we'll be checking the magnetos to make sure they're grounding correctly as well. No carb heat to check on this airplane because it's fuel injected, which is also why we used the boost pump in the beginning to uh, start it. That was a bit new for me. Every plane I've flown so far has a carburetor, so the fuel injection was nice. Uh, it's just one less control to worry about. But it really is weird up in the air reducing power uh, beyond the green arc without putting the carburetor heat on. It's just something you get so used to doing. So I kept looking for it throughout the flight, and it's just not there. Anyhow, um, we had another airplane show up in this uh, time when we were sitting here doing the run-up, so we were kind of waiting for him to take off, as well as letting the engine warm up a little bit. The oil still wasn't in the green range yet, um, so we were decided to just kind of sit and let it run for a bit. And um, in the meantime, Darren uh, went through the operation of the autopilot with me and some of the avionics that are on board the airplane. It's very well equipped with a Bendix King uh, avionics system. has a really nice moving map that shows you where you're at and uh, you can scale in and out, see the terrain and all the uh, airports and airspaces in the area. 
very useful just to keep track of where you're at with a glance. Um, the rest of the avionics are very straightforward, easy to use. So I'm going to edit all of that out because uh, it's mostly pretty boring. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to skip to the takeoff. And here we are taxiing up to the runway for takeoff. As I mentioned, there was another airplane sitting there just a moment prior, and he's on the runway taking off at this point. At an uncontrolled airport like Caldwell, it's important to not enter the runway until it is clear. Um, because there's no control tower to tell you that it's okay. And so each pilot has to take responsibility make sure we're not in anybody's way. So we're also looking at the uh, final approach course, the base leg, and the bottom part of the downwind to make sure there's no airplanes landing. And I'm looking to my left once in a while to see if he's off the ground yet. As soon as he uh, climbs safely away, then we can enter the runway, which we do by crossing those yellow lines right there. That's the whole short line. And then we can take off. Uh, we announce what we're doing on the radio on a common uh, traffic advisory frequency so everyone that's on frequency can hear what we're doing and where we're going. So, here we go. The airplane took off and climbs very well despite having three adults and about 32 gallons of fuel on board. It was almost at max gross weight as we figured by our weight balance calculation that was done prior to uh, getting the airplane out of the hangar. This uh, 172 is a little more powerful than some of the older models. It has 180 horsepower um, so it does perform pretty well for uh, being a four seat airplane. Here we are climbing up over the end of the runway. We're going to turn west and head towards our practice area, so I'm going to skip ahead to that. If you'll notice the altimeter, we're almost at our cruising altitude of 5,000 feet. And there's 5,000, so you'll notice I'll push the nose down and uh, begin trimming for level flight. Um, one of the things about this airplane that really threw me off, it has a pretty good visibility over the nose, more so than the other two Cessnas that I'm used to flying. Um, so that kind of caused some problems with uh, for me because the sight picture looks a lot nose low, a lot more nose low than I'm used to. Um, it's important when you're flying VFR to, to fly the airplane just by visual reference to the horizon. So you're staring at your nose and what it's doing and, and you get used to what it looks like this airplane I just couldn't find that spot because uh, it was new to me and because I haven't flown in nine months so um, I really struggled a lot uh, making uh, steep turns uh, working on stalls and such because uh, I got fixated on the instruments and I really wasn't paying attention to the nose as much as I should have um, that's a common rusty problem it's common to new student pilots as well start looking too much inside and not enough outside. What we're doing here is just some clearing turns in each direction to make sure there's no traffic in our practice area and then we'll skip ahead to the stalls.
I forgot about this part of the video. Um, what we're doing here is slowing down the airplane to slow flight, uh, trimming it to fly level at 50 knots. And um, I had a really hard time with that. It's just, it takes a little bit of skill, and my skills were very, very rusty. So you hear the stall warning horn chirping once in a while because I am all over the place. You see how my nose is going up and down? Wasn't maintaining uh, altitude very well got behind the airplane and it was just ugly so like I said we're gonna skip ahead to the stalls If you're watching the nose, for all of you pilots, you'll see that my rudder coordination is very, very off. I'm wandering all over the place doing these stalls. I have no excuse except that I'm just rusty and uh, really showed. Not coordinated at all. At least I didn't spin it, but came close once or twice. You can see how the airplane yawed to the left pretty hard there when it broke. But um, this is why we practice these things. I know a lot of folks are uh, not familiar with flying. They think that practicing stalls is dangerous. Well, not really. Um, we go up to a safe altitude um, where we have plenty of room. We clear the area of other traffic and it's important to practice slow flying in stalls because that, that's really a very critical area of the airplane's flight performance. If you think about it, every time you take off and every time you land, you really are in slow flight and you're right at the edge of a potential stall. So you have to understand how the airplane behaves, how to keep it coordinated as the forces change, and um, you have to understand how to recover from a stall should one occur. And you could, there's a lot of cues. You can feel the airplane getting kind of mushy on the controls. Um, before it stalls, you feel a, a buffet, kind of a shaking, and um, you can feel the tail kind of sliding around too if you're not uh, coordinated. So we're doing power on stalls at this point, where we leave the power set and just pull the nose up until it stalls. I apologize for that annoying stall warning horn. The recovery for a power on stalls is simple. You just bring the nose back to the horizon and the airplane will start flying again. So uh, I was having a hard time finding a vantage point to keep my nose pointed at. There was not a single cloud in the sky. Normally you pick a cloud or a mountain top, something you can see that uh, you can watch your nose and, and just keep it centered there with your rudder. And uh, I had a hard time with that too. But I'm not making excuses. The, the real issue here is just uh, deteriorated flying skills. And that's what happens when you don't fly for nine months. But uh, in any case, you see Darren very patiently talking me through it, just like I'm a new student again, helping me to see the sight picture, watch my periphery, and make the adjustments to keep it uh, coordinated so that when it stalls, it will just fall straight ahead like it's supposed to. After the stalls we did some steep turns which were not very pretty. 
So I took them out. You don't want to see that. Um, Darren's getting a little frustrated with me at this point. I just was not flying well. In this scenario, we've uh, simulated an engine failure, and I'm circling around that field that I keep looking at. Uh, we're going to try to make a, an emergency landing. Now, we're not actually going to land. We picked this kind of remote area um, so we could get down pretty low. And um, again, you pilot folks will notice that I'm way high. I started my turn to final a little early and waited too long on the flaps. So, um, you see that lake right there? A little pond, the center one. There's the green field just uh, this side of it. And that's what I was aiming for, but I'm too high to make it. And Darren didn't want to go swimming, so he tells me to go around and we move on to some other training. actually got a little bit airsick uh, right after that emergency uh, landing practice and I um, don't know why I just didn't feel too well so before heading back uh, we took took the time to go through the autopilot's operation that's what we're doing here this turn you see is a autopilot flown turn uh, Darren showing me how to enter a navigational course uh, with the GPS and have the autopilot track it or how to enter a VOR course and have the autopilot track it as well as using the altitude hold mode so this airplane has a two axis autopilot it does control the airplane in roll and in pitch so it can do turns and uh, maintain level flight I think it can do climbs and descents too I'm not sure um, the pilot still has to manage the throttle and the rudders to help the plane stay coordinated but it makes a very very light bank turn to uh, to track the heading so it doesn't really take much rudder as far as coordinating those turns it's not abrupt at all uh, so here we are uh, using the heading mode you notice I'm adjusting the heading bug um, and we're watching how the airplane reacts and Darren's showing me the different features and functions of the avionics so that was pretty neat uh, like I said I wasn't feeling too well I just didn't uh, have lunch before we started flying I thought I was fine but it caught up with me and uh, so we cut it short and head back to the airport so let's skip ahead to that here we are making our turn to enter the downwind at an uncontrolled airport, uh, you join the downwind at a 45 degree angle. So here I am now uh, turning downwind and the runway is to our right. As you can see we're parallel to it. A little bit farther out than I should have been. Again, I was really rusty. But uh, we're going ahead through our gumps uh, before landing checklist which is gas. Make sure it's on. Undercarriage. Down and welded. Mixture is set. Propeller is set and the seat belts are set. Um, we also add two or more to those most of the time which is carb heat and cow flaps. This airplane doesn't have either of those so just the gumps worked and we're coming downhill now one notch of flaps 85 charting base and uh, 75 and another notch of flaps I had problems keeping my nose in the right spot here too. You noticed I pulled it up during that turn quite a bit. So as a result I was pretty high on the final approach. Which translated into a little extra speed. Which caused me to kind of balloon when I uh, entered ground effect as you'll see in just a moment. But now uh, we're turning final. 
and bringing in the last notch of flaps so we have 30 degrees of flaps making our radio calls and uh, getting lined up with the runway I really wish I could take credit for that landing, but that was actually Darren's landing. Um, I made an inappropriate control input when the airplane started to float or balloon. I tried to relax the elevator pressure, which is exactly the wrong thing to do. Um, that could have potentially caused the nose wheel or even the propeller to hit the ground first. And so Darren had to take over and uh, flare the airplane for me. So that was his landing. Um, just rust, a lot of rust, and uh, made the inappropriate uh, control input. So we need to get back in this airplane and do some more practicing until I can fly right again. So anyway, we are taxiing back to the hangar. I hope you found this video enjoyable to watch. I apologize again for the poor editing and uh, I didn't realize how much those sun visors were in the cameras away I'm still looking at some other options um, to get the GoPro mounted a little better so you can see what I'm seeing um, this one was a lot better than before uh, but still it seems like we're having trouble with the the exposure focus uh, inside and outside the airplane so maybe I'll be able to get another camera later and maybe wear one on my chest and one on my head and that way you can see the panel clearly and the outside clearly and then I can uh, just edit between those two views but in any case uh, thank you for watching hope you enjoyed uh, this flight and there's more to come soon